So tomorrow is um, kind of a rest day. Well, not really. Got to have my motorbike in at um, Harley Davidson. And um, I've got to explain to them that I need an oil change. Well, I, I need the tyres fitted. That's the main thing. So I'm just going to have to beg, borrow, steal, pay them off, give them extra money. But I'm leaving Harley Davidson tomorrow with, with my dirt bike tyres on. And, um, and hopefully some new oil and an oil filter. And I think the bike's good to go. What I'm concerned about, it's really dawned on me, is I don't exactly know how many highway kilometres that I'm going to be doing on the, um, on the, the they're called Anarchy Wilds, they're, they're the, the off-road tyres that go on the Pan America, they actually fit on my bike, we've had one of the rear wheels change so it'll fit. Um, so this means the, the, the road king can go, go rogue now, we can go off-road, go through mud, go through dirt, really carve it up, but the problem is, I reckon you can only get maybe five or six thousand kilometers on a highway before they're totally destroyed. So I just don't know how far it is to Bolivia because because I haven't put it into the map. I can't exactly find a direct route. You know what I'm saying? So the more off-road I do, the longer they'll last. The more bitumen I do, they're going to wear out. So I could be in real strife. I'm almost tempted to take the road, road tires with me, but I'm not going. I'm going to leave them in Bogota, um, and just I'm just going to have to risk it. This is this is a trip where you just got to wing it. Like fuck, you know, do I, do, do I just carry spare tires the whole trip? The plan was to put the road tires on in Colombia and then head to Bolivia, um, but I've got a feeling that it's probably. Mm, I'm hoping it's only two and a half thousand kilometres to Bolivia and then two and a half. So hopefully I'll just come back where it's just hitting the canvas and then I can put the um, the road tyres back on. Guys, there's a lot of variables here. I, I'm winging this, okay? Not much cellular network, can't speak the language. Um, I'm on a Harley Davidson. It's 400 kilos, 500 with me on it and all my gear. Um, I'm trying to do uh, something that... I don't think a lot of people from Australia would do. I certainly will not be doing it again, um, going through those tolls. I've got PTSD from that. I'm going to have to go to hospital after this this vlog. I'm going to be in a psychiatric ward for at least six months. I want to play imaginary volleyball with other with other patients. That's the vlog. Tomorrow we wake up. That's the end of day 12, 13, 14. I don't know. That we wake up and we're going to head to Harley Davidson. The good thing is I won't have... All my gear on the back, I won't have the Rick Rake system because I'm in this hotel for two nights. So it's going to be sort of the first semi-break I've had in about 13 days, which is good. I need it. I'm run down as hell. And, um, yeah, anyway, I've run out. We're in Colombia. I got the bike. Things are good. Good morning, um, internet followers and people, subscribers. And um, I think today's about day 14, two weeks into the trip. I'm in um, Bogota, Colombia. Today I'm taking the bike to Harley-Davidson. Um, I've made a decision though, after looking at the map, um, and I'll show you. I was gonna get the Anarchy Wilds. They're the, the Pan America nobbies put on the bike. They're the, the tires I've been bringing with me. I've bought them nearly 7,000 case so far. I was gonna get them put on here, but I've just realized that before I make Bolivia, they would have worn out. Um, a lot of highway riding still to go. So what I've decided to do is um, we're, in, we're in Bogota just to ride to Quinto. We've got to go through Ecuador. So you've got to go this way. This is the only way you can go. You've got to go to Ecuador, Peru, and then Ecuador, Peru, and then into Bolivia. Just to ride from Bogota to... Oh, you mother. Just to ride, just to ride from Colombia to Quinto is 23 hours. Then from Quinto to Lima is another two and a half thousand Ks. So I've got three and a half thousand Ks to 4,000 Ks of riding to go. <laughs> um, so if I can get the tires put on in Lima here in Peru, then I've only got to ride into Bolivia. I mean, that's still a ride. But the, the tyres should be good for... They say you'll get 3,000 miles highway riding. So you'll probably get, what's that, 5,000 k's. And from Lima to Bolivia, Death Road and back isn't going to be 5,000. No way. So there's still shit. Why would my alarm go off as I'm filming? Fuck off. So there's still at least 10,000 k's to go. Just to get there, <laughs> so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be carrying those tires for a while yet. So anyway, let's get the um, the bike serviced. Um, all I want is new oil and an oil filter. That's it. 
um, I'll get him to quickly check the bike. And um, if they do that quickly this morning, even though I've booked for another night here, I might actually take off today because time is just of the essence. Time is getting away from me. Um, you just don't realise how far places are. It's it's vast. It's it's truly. We started up here somewhere. We started up here. Anyway, let's get sorted. Okay, let's go to um, Harley Davidson and um, have fun with um, translating. How's this? Do not disturb sign. Look what look what it says. No molester. Sort of you don't see that every day, do you? Fucking alarm. You fucking fuck up. Okay, how hard can it be for an oil change? This shouldn't take long. secret to any Harley keeping it alive is is just regular servicing and I've always done that so um, oil and oil filter um, that's all I need and um, not gonna worry about the tires yet we'll deal with that once we get to Lima which is three or four or five thousand kilometers away I don't exactly know how far it is away but it's a long way since I hit Mexico I have not seen no bullshit, not one other Harley Davidson. So I'm just figuring out my money. I just filled my bike up and I gave the guy two million pesos, thinking that's a ton of money. I'm like, take it, dude. And he wanted like 70 million. <laughs> thinking, Jesus. Anyway, I've just withdrawn 600 US dollars and I've got this wad of cash. And I just worked out that 50 million pesos 50 million is worth about 10 us dollars so that's just got to remember 50 million 10 us dollars always be learning abl that's what i'm doing all these different currencies i got about 20 now so harley davidson should be around here somewhere i've not seen one harley there it is so here we are at bogota or in colombia harley davidson this is it, huh? Colombia, let's see how we go. Okay, they can't service it here because their technician is at a place called Cali, which is on my way to um, Ecuador. So I'm actually not gonna stay the night here. I'm gonna start making my way to Cali. I'm feeling refreshed and um, they're booking it in, in Cali between 9 and 9.30. It's about a 10 hour ride through the mountains. So um, let's get back to the hotel, get packed up, get the hell out of here, get the bike serviced, and um, let's get on the road. The guy's saying at the dealership, there's no way I can make the Bolivia death road in the time that I've got allocated. Um, we'll see about that, huh? He's saying I'm gonna have to do at least a thousand kilometers a day. See, this is what happens. You, um, I've just booked two nights hotel. I'm gonna lose a night's accommodation because I didn't book it direct with the hotel. Um, because things change. And that's why I can't do meet and greets or meet up with people. Like I can't get the bike service there. So I've got to go to Cali, which is on the way anyway, towards Ecuador. So it makes sense just to get on the road today. Um, I'm behind time anyway, so. I'll make up, you know, seven or eight hundred k's today. Remember, this isn't a sightseeing tour of South America. This is a tour to get to Bolivia, to get to that road. That's what this vlog's about. So it's no holiday, you know. It's not let's go look at a market and buy some shit. 
it's, it's just about riding through some spectacular um, country, seeing the, the geography of the country. That's what I want to see. I want to capture that by drone and um, as best I can on GoPro, you know? I'm sort of glad I'm leaving early. Um, inner city's not for me. I'm much happier on the bike out in the country. You know, going up and down mountains is where it's at for me. The unknown twisties, all the variables that come with it, the cold, the, the mist, the rain. That's, that's what I'm about. As I was saying, there's some great roads in Colombia to ride, but you know, there's one of the highest, you know, I think it's east, five and a half thousand meters. I'm just not gonna be able to do it because, you know, I've got to take into account that my tires are gonna run low, servicing of the bike. You know, I'd hate to break down because I veered off and then I didn't get a crack to ride the Bolivia death road. So I just gotta stay focused on Bolivia and just make my way there. Today we're gonna to go, go on a bit of a scenic route to Cali, but we've gotta go that anyway. We've gotta go that way anyway, and in the morning I'll get the bike serviced. That's all sorted, which is good. Um, but as I've always said, everything that seems so simple in South America or Central America never ever is simple. becomes difficult. Okay, let's get packed up. <laughs> Carrying these tyres halfway around the world. I hope I get a chance to put them on. <laughs> Otherwise, it just seems like a big waste. Jeez, they must weigh 10, 12 kilos. Okay, I'm feeling pretty rested. It's, um, it's a time. It's 10 to 10. Um, should be on the road by 10 past 10, 20 minutes, hopefully. Right, pack up all this shit, look at this. All right, let's do it. Okay, we're leaving in a rush. Check the room. All right, we're good. Hopefully I've got everything. Passport, credit cards, cash, that's the main things really. And my terabyte hard drive, everything else I can lose. Um, all right, let's go. Okay, it's 20 past 10. Good to go. I just can't stand the cities, they do my head in. Let's go, start heading towards Ecuador, yeah? All you people that have winched about safety gear, you can't complain about this trip. It's saying 10 hours and one minute to go. Colombia but the trip was never about riding around Colombia it was about getting to Bolivia I think coming to Colombia and, and doing all the mountains is a trip in itself but this is just something I wanted to do this used to be called the most dangerous road in the world I, I don't think it is anymore but it, it was at one time I just hope I can get access to it I'm taking a wrong turn at the drag strip. Reckon I can beat them? Let's give it a go, hey? Hey, uh, gotta say something, with all the clutch riding I've done over the years at this bike, would you believe this is still the original clutch? So this is a 17 model, so it's five years old. It's done about 77,000 Ks. 
pretty hard caves. And I'm still on the same clutch, same motor. Yeah. That's good. Feeling it's gonna get real cold. I've got two bob head flannelette, both Kevlar lined, which is quite warm. So I've got this on, but then I'm gonna put their new armored jacket over the top oh that's better so I got a fair bit of protection really what an incredible setup helmet that's in there let's go
this is what it's about, peeps. The roads are awesome. They're just mountains full of greenery, and then there's clouds below it. We are going to see some unbelievable scenery. This is what I came here for. I'm starting to feel it now. All that border shit's behind me, I hope. But um, this is just, this is good body. Ridiculously hot, my God. Uh, no, um, no Spanish. English, sorry. Hot. <laughs> it's a pretty boring ride. Stuck behind a lot of traffic. Roads are good, scenery's nice, but just sort of sitting on 40 to 80 k's an hour. It's 33 degrees.
hours and 23 minutes to go. It's now 38 degrees. <laughs> it's getting hot, real hot. The destination is Cali in Colombia, C-A-L-I. And tomorrow morning I'll get the bike serviced. Let's go. That's intense riding. How's that cop? I mean, that's how you got to ride, otherwise it just takes you forever to get anywhere, but... No. Jeez, I was throwing the road king around. <laughs> okay, let's put the drone up. Let's see if we can capture some of this scenery, hey? Let's do it. First flight of the new drone. I'll try not to lose it. Let's go.
A brutal ride, it is freezing hot, you name it, it's all happening. Can we get cold? Trying to control a 400 
if I don't get pissed on, the weather does not look good at all. I've got no idea what it is, but no, oh, poor Bob. Just give some to the dog, hey? I'm gonna get real wet. Just looking at the map. That's how far I've traveled. Traveled in seven hours. I've got to actually go to here. I think I'll get there in about four years. Um, I've underestimated this trip. This is um, absolute test of endurance and pain. And if the bike, if the bike, if the bike breaks down, I'm just gonna have to leave it. That's just give it to someone or stash it somewhere and do like a recovery mission in three months' time when I get out of the psychiatric ward after this trip. It is torture. It's the hardest trip I've done in regards to endurance and pain. I think I'm about at, I'm I'm only eight thousand kilometres in. Not even like, yeah, anyway. Got to keep going though. Got to at least try and get to Bolivia. And then I'm just going to get a helicopter home. So many times I've wanted to quit this trip just through sheer frustration. Um, I'm sick. Um, but I've just, I'm fixated on, you know, getting to my destination. After that, I don't care what happens, but I just want to get to that that road, you know, to say I've done it. Ready for the rain. So my passport's protected, can't get wet. My phone's in my pocket. It's pretty much just straight forever. Everyone's putting on their rain gear. We are headed into an apocalypse. Can't wait. This is going to be a hard ride. Three hours. Probably take five.
came at the Intercontinental five star hotel this is the best hotel in town I've um just 10 hours of absolute shit riding and um just having a moment where I'm just thinking what the fuck am I doing here why do I do this to myself why do I have to put myself through so much fucking pain for what Right to some stupid fucking road in the middle of nowhere so I can say I've done it. I don't even know what, what I'm doing here. I just want to go home at the moment. I just want to leave the fucking bike here and go to an airport and fly home. Then I know once I've... Yeah, anyway. Fucking stupid security guard man just yelling at me. I'll tell you what, he does it again. I'm gonna fucking hit buddy, man. I mean that. He's just staring at me like I'm some freak. Mate, I'll tell you what, you don't want me to get my freak on. Because trust me, it'll scare you. look <laughs> the guy at reception who checked me in just said what happened to your face I said what happened I said what happened to yours mate I said I just rode a motorbike for 16 fucking hours people are judgmental could have some facial illness where I've got scars <sighs> fucking idiot he tells me to move my motorbike, tells me to plug it into my GPS and it's about a kilometre away. How about you fucking park it, mate? Where am I in? Why am I always down the fucking end? Fucking torture was over. I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm just so done. I'm so fucking done. <laughs> what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? It's just, it's just 10 hours of pain in the rain. For what? Like, what am I running from? Just running, I'm just running all the time. I'm running. I'll do anything to sit. Rather than sit in my own skin, I'll just travel the world or just chase women, just buy motorbikes, buy fast cars. I'll do anything rather than just sit in my own skin. And, um, you know, it really dawned on me on the last 10 hours it really hit me how I just cannot sit still and I'm 50 years old. Yeah, I'm struggling like I'm, I'm on my way to fucking Bolivia. <laughs> and I looked at the map. I looked at the map and today I travelled like this far. But Bolivia's like this far away. I'm not going to make it. There's no way. <laughs> the bike's going to blow up. Are wet, shoes are wet. <sighs> I'm having a self pity moment. Miss my dad. Still can't go to his graveside. Still hate my brother. He fucking killed himself. Single, can't be, in a, can't be in a relationship. Can't even live with myself, let alone with anyone else. I just keep hoping. If 
I just keep writing, I'll find the answers, you know, for whatever I'm looking for. I just feel this trip's been pointless. I've just written all this way. And I, I just want to try and get there and then get a helicopter and fucking go home. And just play with my dog on the couch. Netflix, why can't I be fucking normal? I just sit on the couch and watch fucking Netflix. Oh. I'm gonna move my fucking motorbike, these motherfuckers. Anyway, I know this will be uncomfortable for people to watch this. A grown man having meltdowns. These aren't meltdowns, these are, this is real. This is 50 years of living, two divorces, brother fucking nicked himself, coming to terms with losing a parent, um, learning to live in my own skin, which is hard. It's just growing up. I just sometimes wonder what the purpose is of being here. I don't get it. It just seems to be the endurance of pain as you get older. People you love leave you. People you love die. And then, and then you have to live with it. And you gotta suck it up. You, you gotta suck it up and you gotta you gotta try and find the optimism in life. You've gotta try and be positive about things. You know, that's why some people grow old and they're really angry and they're really bitter. The secret is to try and grow older and try and, try and stay grateful and try and keep a level of humility. That's what I'm chasing, I guess, humility and to get rid of my anger. Yeah, let's just ride a Harley Davidson non-stop around the world, Danny. Great, great plan. <laughs>